Hello, fun. My name is Nick, and I'm here at the Midwest Regional in Chicago with Team 930 McQuanago Bears. They've already had an incredibly successful season, winning the Impact Award and winning the entire event up at the Wisconsin Regional two weeks ago. They have an incredibly unique robot with a turret I don't think I've seen on very many other teams. To learn more about this, stick around as it's coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Now we're going over to Asher to talk about their electrical system. Take it away, Asher. So our electrical system on this robot is very cool. In past years, we haven't been this organized, but as you can see, our wires are in extremely integrated into our robot. They're not in the way. We made sure of that in order for our turret to spin. For the turret to be able to spin as far as it does, we have about eight feet of flexible snakeskin wrapped wires, which goes to everything up on this turret. When the turret spins, it wraps around our harmonic gearbox in such a way that it won't tear any cords. We had one problem with that in the past, but thank goodness we fixed it. That was a code issue. Another very cool thing about our robot this year is we've completely um, systemized the wiring diagram. So each of our wires have the pin number that goes into the power display or distribution hub and the CAN ID so that it works fluently between our electrical team and our coding team. It's very easy to find what wires go to which motors because it's all labeled well. Thank you, Asher. Now we're going over to Ryan to talk about how their intake system works. So our intake is an under the bumper intake, single sided. It runs using two Kraken motors and a bunch of poly belt, which allows it to take the note from directly under the bumper height and take it straight up to the robot from a near, nearly 90 degree angle. It runs using bevel gears on the sides, connected to all the motor driven, all the motor driven tubes, so that it assists with both centering and pushing it up into the robot using more force. Then that leads directly into the indexer, which uses the star wheels and other compliant wheels to help with, after it's, the note's done in the intake, to take it and push it up into the shooter and the probe. Very cool. Uh, could we get, or would we be able to see that indexer moving? One question I would ask is how you come up with the design. It's really unique having it pass up through almost disconnected assemblies. I don't think I've seen that in many other robots yet. Uh, it, the, the intake was originally double-sided and we had it the same way with just the two separated sub-assemblies where it just passes one up into the other. But the, in, the double-sided intake was a little ambitious for us and we ran out of some time in the build season in order to get it. So we pivoted to a single-sided intake and the star wheels really help with grabbing. Very cool. Uh, now we're heading over to Matt to talk about their turret system. All right, so our turret is very is a very unique turret. So I put up here. So what we use to drive our our, our turret is the uh, is a harmonic gearbox. So it's a little hard to see here, but right under here we have the harmonic gearbox. This is driven from the bottom using a Kraken motor, um, which fits a tube, and then. It, it, then the turret or the pivot itself is bolted directly into the harmonic gearbox with these four bolts here. Um, really, this helps a lot with our packaging. Um, we used to have a, a giant like turret assembly, and then we we, we uh, got down to uh, over half or less than half the size of what our original one was by using this harmonic gearbox. As well as that, the harmonic gearbox has basically zero backlash. Um, this is allows us does programming and allows the turret to be very smooth with very little um, like overshooting or backlash or just slap in the system. It allows it to be a very consistent, very um, accurate turret. 
Very cool. I guess one thing I'd ask is why you opted to go with a turret, um, given this year's game. I know m many teams didn't, but you all didn't. It's worked very well for you. Uh, Strategy-wise, we wanted to be able to really quickly grab and, and pivot and shoot um, with our with our uh, our shooter. So the, go the idea was to be able to like run and really quickly uh, shoot like four in the speaker uh, in the ant period. We really quickly get all four of those uh, uh, ant nodes into the speaker as quick as possible. For having to spin your entire drive base, spin around. With this, we can just kind of just go aim our intake and don't have to worry about the pivot, uh, the drive base spinning, just spin the turret and shoot straight into the middle speaker. So we use a total of five limelights to help automate a lot of our processes. So right over here, we have a limelight three and a Google Coral, which we use to do game piece detections, uh, especially in autonomous, to help us uh, more easily and accurately pick up um, nodes on the midline. But then we also have four other limelights, four game, uh, April tags. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so we have two threes back here. We have a left and a back camera. But over on the front and the right, we have three Gs, which are a lot uh, better, especially when it comes to motion blur and frames per second. And so we use them throughout the match entirely, um, separately from each other. And whenever it sees April tags, it updates its odometry so it knows more accurately where it is on the field. And so that assists our shooter a lot because if the robot knows where it is on the field and knows where it's um, oriented, we can tell the turret to go to a certain angle to automatically uh, face towards the, our speaker. But then also knowing our distance from the speaker that helps us with our equations to determine how high up our pivot should be along with our um, shooter wheel speeds. When it does see a, a collection of two tags, it will update its odometry and the, it will try and update to where it thinks the speaker is. Absolutely, it's very interesting stuff. Well, thank you so much for your time, Aquanigo Bears. I wish you the best going later into this event. You've already been strong today and I'm sure you'll keep it up. Thank you so much for your time. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.